guys and welcome back to another M Crater tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is flying entities, not flying entity pets. That's going to be a different tutorial and there's a few other tutorials that are related to flying. But uh, I wanted to get the basics done first so you guys kind of have an idea how to create a flying entity and get it to generate in your world. So... Uh, right here, I have just a basic layout. I have two folders. Uh, there's a main folder and then a, a subfolder, and then I have my meshes inside of it. Uh, one thing to note is with the entities for wings and stuff like that, currently, at this point in time, uh, it's not possible to actually get a really good wing kind of flapping animation. So your best bet for at least now is to just create some sort of wing detail. Uh, similar to this where it's just a actual shape that it will kind of indicate that there is wings so keep that in mind at least for the moment and um, maybe in the near future there will be a custom animation support or something like that that we can actually make them flap a little bit more accurately but uh, currently the current animations are based on if the entity is walking or moving and it's just very minor it just kind of goes like this a little bit when it's moving so it's not really a huge difference so it's not going to be very impression of it actually getting enough lift so it's just probably not even worth trying uh if you want to uh you could set up this in a different subgroup call it something like right wing left wing and then have um your your main group subgroup and then you can have uh, your right and left wing inside its own little category and then you would animate the the main group for that wing but um, outside of that we're just going to be using this basic system so once you've done made your model and have it set up like this with the two folders then what you're going to want to do is you want to go to file and then export now if you don't have the export as java then you're in the wrong workspace make sure that you're in the modded workspace for or modded entity if you're not in the modded entity then it's not going to show the export java feature uh, i constantly have to remind people to do that but um, if you need to convert your project there is a button right here where it says convert project and then you can select what one you actually need it for. So it, if it's not showing up in this list, it's you're in the right workspace. If it you do see modded entity, then you are obviously in the wrong one. All right, so with that said, we'll just export this and then we'll export it as Java and then we'll just save it as that. And then we have our texture. If you don't have your texture, you'll have to Go ahead and save this as well. I already have it on my desktop, so I don't need to. And then you should also save your actual block bench model. So you would just go save project and save it to your block bench uh, or your folder, whatever you have your projects assets located in. Uh, reason for this, if Minecraft changes how entities render, then you might have to go back into your block bench and re-export it at a different version. Uh, one other final note is if you are working on an older version of mCreator, then you might need MCP for 1.15 or 1.15 or 1.16 or MCP for 1.14. If it's before that, then I recommend updating, but if that's not the case, then you want to use that one. Uh, 1.817 and up will use Moj Maps, uh, this one option right here. So make sure that you're in the right workspace for your model or you're going to run into a whole bunch of issues. So now that we have the model and everything else, what we can do is we can just close out of that. And we have our three files right here. So these are our three files for our entity. So we're going to boot up mCreator and then we'll put together the entity itself. All right, so first things first, what we're going to need to do is actually import our assets. I'm going to delete these old ones so we can start completely fresh and we'll um, take it from there. So one step at a time. So first thing that we're going to need to do is import our model. So we're, we're our, our texture, pardon me. So we're going to go to import and scroll down to entity and then we're going to select our desktop where it's stored and then select our 
texture. Now your files might be somewhere else, so you might have to figure out where they are, but we're gonna select our globe texture for entity. And then what we need to do is not import a JSON model, but Java model. And then it will basically say what version you need for your model exporter. So again, we use Moj Maps 1.17, which also supports 18 and 19. So we're going to use the model and then it's going to give us an option based on the folder system that we have. We're not actually going to have any particular rotation. We don't need it. If you have the wings, then what you would do is you would set up the animations for like arm or leg motion, but um, there's absolutely no way to actually get it animated properly that I can actually see. So you would need code for that. So we're just going to uh, set new animations and then it will leave it at the default um, like empty for the animations. So now we can go to our elements tab, click on that, and then we're going to go to living entity and we're going to call this globe. Uh, this is what we're our actual model is for the tutorial. Yours might be different. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our model is going to be our globe. And then we need to set our texture for a globe. Uh, all these other settings are optional. You don't really need to configure them, but if you want to, you can. Uh, the other thing that we want to do is, depending on if you wanted a hostile or passive mob, this will vary depending on what uh, behavior characteristics you are going to have. So if you're going to work with a mob, then something that attacks a player or another entity, you might want uh, something like mob. But if you want something like a creature, maybe like a wolf or something like that, that can still be attacking something else, then you might want something like creature. So this one's more for hostile entities like skeletons, stuff like that, where this one's more for anything else that is... Uh, player friendly or at least neutral. So we're going to leave it on create uh, creature and then we're going to go down and make sure that we check this box right here. It says is flying entity uh, gravity does not pull it down does not take full damage. So we want to check that box right there. That's the only two things that you have to really pay attention on this uh, page. Everything else is customizable. Uh, particles obviously optional inventory optional triggers optional ai tasks so this is where it gets a little bit more confusing but we're going to just delete all this stuff because we don't really need it and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to ai templates and then we're going to go ahead and select the one that says flying passive mob so this will give us all the basic stuff that we need for just a passive mob. There's also, I think, a flying aggressive mob. So things like the, um, oh, I can't remember the uh, thing that it's called, the um, little manta ray that flies around and stuff like that. But that would be basically this one where it's a little bit different. Uh, do flight attacks with radius and stuff like that. So everything is pre-configured. You don't need to do anything other than drop it directly on. So once you've done that, uh, you can configure if you want it breedable or anything like that. If not, then just move on to spawning. And then this is the final thing that we actually need to make sure that we get right. So depending on how you want it to basically spawn, if you want it to spawn at all, uh, you need to enable the spawning if you want it to actually spawn in your world. And then if you want it to idle, when it's idle to despawn, similar to how uh, entities that despawn after a certain range, this needs to be checked. If not, if you want it something more like bats, disable this. And then you want to just basically set up your, your spawning type. So mob natural spawning type. And this one is actually going to be called ambient. So you want the ambient one. This basically is what bats and stuff use for generation. Uh, they're generally underground, but with this setting, you'll be able to actually have them above ground as well. So with that being said, that's all the settings that you actually need to do. We'll just save this and then we'll go in game and then I'll basically show that it works. All right, so I will go ahead and then just kind of fly around and see if I can't find one of these. It looks like there's some in the distance already. So there's a whole bunch of them over here and we can kind of see how the 
wings and stuff are set up. So that's basically how they fly around. They're very similar to bees. They'll kind of bob up and down and fly around and stuff like that. So uh, here's a better example. They're all over the place by the looks of it. You might want to adjust the weight uh, for the spawning as well, if depending on how many of them you want, and maybe the biome as well, so they don't constantly, you know, spawn in every biome. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. They'll just kind of fly around and stuff like that. Very similar to bees or bats and stuff. So uh, bats, I think their wings actually flap, but that's already hard-coded and stuff like that, so you can't really do too much. Holy stink, there's a lot of them right here. Yeah, that, that might the weight might be a little bit too much. But um, basically that's what you do with it. Uh, there's not too much. Uh, you, as long as it's for the ambient, you should be fine. Looks like they spawn in the ice biomes as well. Is that a... That looks like a, uh, what do you call it, ruins, underwater ruins right through the ice there. Anything good? Can't even open this. Okay, maybe I'm just experiencing a lot of lag from all the entities. Because I wasn't able to open up the chest. So probably too many entities um, spawning. I, well, yeah, probably because they're not even moving now. And we've opened up the chest from many blocks away. <laughs> Alright, anyhow, um, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Obviously, uh, idle despawning might be a good idea for these things because, I mean, that's pretty much a lot of entities. So, And they're just, they just keep spawning. So you might want idle and uh, despawning enabled so they don't, like start flying up like this um, I'm sure there's more to come I think they just keep generating so um, yeah but outside of that if you are new to my channel again don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out